In the last section, we kicked off a review of ES6 classes. We're using ES6 classes to reorganize and clean up a lot of the code that we have inside of our index.js file on the Electron side of our project. In reviewing ES6 classes, we created a new class called car. We're now going to continue by creating a second class called Honda. A Honda is a type of car, and so inside of my application, maybe it's going to make sense to say that all the configuration, all the setup, all the properties that a car has should be contained within a Honda as well. So a Honda should borrow functionality from the car class. It should extend that functionality in some fashion. So let's flip back over to the JS Playgrounds and create this new Honda class and make sure that it borrows or extends all the functionality of the car class that we had previously created. So back inside of JS Playgrounds, I'm going to delete all the print statements or all the different statements that we put underneath the car definition. So I'm going to select all this stuff and get rid of it. Now I'm going to create my Honda class. Because a Honda class is a car and I want it to borrow or use all the functionality that exists inside of the car class, I'll write out class Honda extends car. By doing so, I'm creating a link between the Honda class that was just created and the car class that was previously made. If I now created an instance of a Honda, I would borrow all the functions, all the methods, all the different properties, all the code that is set up inside of the car class. If I want to do some further configuration of this Honda instance or this Honda class right here, I can freely define additional methods inside of it. So maybe we'll say that a Honda has a color. Or how about a model? Let's do a model. So a Honda has a model type. An example of a model type might be like a Honda Accord or a Honda Fit. These are types of cars that are Hondas. So maybe inside the constructor right here, we'll receive some options object again, and we'll say this.model is options.model. So maybe the requirement here is that whenever we create a Honda, we have to both specify the model of the car, and we also might need to specify the number of wheels. Now you'll notice that both the Honda class and the car class are currently defining the constructor method. Whenever we create a subclass of another class, which Honda is, so Honda is a subclass of car, if we want to make sure that the constructor function inside the car is called as well, we can use the super keyword and pass in any arguments that were provided to the constructor. By adding in the super keyword right here, it makes sure that the parent class's constructor is called. So you can really think of super right here. This can be really thought of as the constructor inside of car. So maybe a better way of writing this out would be something like car.constructor. This code right here will not work, but you can kind of get the idea. Calling super is equivalent to calling car.constructor. So now, if I were to create an instance of Honda, I would be expected to pass in a model of, maybe we'll say it's an Accord. Let's give ourselves a little space here. And I'm gonna specify the number of wheels as four as well. So now I can print out the number of wheels, four, and Accord dot model, yep, it's an Accord as well. So again, the idea behind this subclass that we just created right here is that it's going to borrow all the functionality that was defined inside of the car class. We created the constructor function inside of the Honda class and then added in some new configuration that is specific to only a Honda. By calling super with all the options that were passed in the constructor, we can call the constructor function that is defined inside of the parent class. So in this case, when we called super with options, that then called the constructor that existed inside the car. car. We use the super keyword here whenever we want to make sure that the constructor inside of the parent class is called. Okay, so I know that going over ES6 classes like this, yeah, it really came out of the blue. You probably didn't expect to have to look a lot at ES6 classes inside of Electron course, I know. So why did we do this? Well, remember, 
to clean up the code inside of our application, we're going to take that tray class that we got from the Electron library and use it to make it a new class that we're going to call timer tray. Timer tray is going to extend the tray base class. We're going to then take this timer tray function or this timer tray class that we're creating and add some additional code to it to customize the tray for our very particular uses. Again, at the end of the day, we are doing this so that we can clean up the code inside of our application. And I think that when we complete all the code that we're writing here, when we do this refactor, I am absolutely positive you're going to agree that the result of what we're writing is going to look a lot nicer inside of our code editor. It's going to be a little bit more confusing, a little bit more complicated, but it's going to be a solution that scales to the size of our project much more nicely. So as we start to add in more features, our code will be that much more maintainable over time. Now, the last thing I want to say about classes and extending all that kind of stuff. Hey, if going over this, if this didn't make sense, if you're not familiar with object oriented programming, do not sweat it. The refactor we're going to do will not be that bad. So I am 100% positive that you'll be able to follow along even if this class stuff didn't make a whole lot of sense. Okay, so let's take a break. We're gonna come back in the next section and we're going to start doing this refactor for our timer tray class.